Hey, Chuck Sharpstein here with Enlightened Marketing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create dynamic product, dynamic product ads for your e-commerce store. Now, for this, you do need a product feed from your, your store. So depending on what store you have, um, that process is a little different. So if you're coming to this video and you don't have that product feed URL yet, um, I will put some links in the description to the top stores like Shopify, WooCommerce, and things like that. Um, in the description of this video or on this blog post wherever you're watching the video so you can go and, and click on one of those and learn how to create the product feed and grab the URL. Um, once you do that go ahead and grab the URL and come back here. So cool once you have now that you have the URL um, we'll go ahead and come to your Facebook ads account here. Uh, if you don't know how to get here to product catalog when you go to your ads manager just click on this hamburger menu here go to this menu you might have to hover over all links and then go under assets to product catalogs and that'll bring you here um, you might see some stuff if you've created it before but if not it'll probably bring you to a page like this just go ahead and click create product feed you may need to pick a, a pixel and say okay if it asks you that just make sure you choose the pixel that you have on your website that you you plan on retargeting ads to so once you're here, you can name the feed whatever you want. I normally just leave it whatever it names it because I, I don't normally make a lot of different feeds for each, uh, for each client. Uh, currency, obviously, whatever currency you're selling in. And then upload type, if you're pulling a URL of, a, of your product feed from your store, you're going to want to leave it scheduled recurring uploads. So in, the case, in, the, in this case, what I'm showing you right now, you're going to want to leave it there. Uh, from here, go ahead and click Next. And then this is where you're going to add the URL. Um, leave the scheduled uploads to daily. I do like to set this early in the morning so that it updates before most people are going to be um, getting onto Facebook. So I'll change that to like 2 a.m. is what I normally do. And then Feed URL is where you're going to add the URL that you grabbed from your store previously. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a, another URL from a a store and paste that in here. You probably don't need to worry about username and password. Uh, it would be in a, in a case where you have a different URL from something uh, like like it says here an FTP or something like that. You would probably know if you need this. If you don't know anything about this just leave it blank and it should work. Go ahead and click create feed after that. And then that is about it for the feed. Uh, you may see some errors down here. Um, I can't go into every single error in this video because there's just so many things that can happen. But generally, it'll tell you here what's wrong. Just make sure in your store that you, you're giving each product a title and a description and price and things like that. Um, a, yellow, a yellow triangle like this shouldn't keep you from making ads. Uh, like in this case, I, I'll still be able to create this feed and use it to, to create dynamic product ads. So that's pretty much it for adding your feed. Um, you may want to go to product sets here and you will have a default all products which is what I'm going to show you how to use and what I use a lot of the time. If you do need to whittle down to specific products uh, for each dynamic product ad set you can go ahead and click create product set here and that's going to allow you to do things like say you only want to show products that are over $50 or products from a specific category, things like that, or from a specific brand. Um, so things like that, it'll allow you to create different product sets. And then obviously you name it, you know, over $50 here or whatever. I'm not gonna create a product ad set, but I just wanted to show you that you do have the ability to create that. So from the product feed that you just created, we're gonna go ahead and start creating the dynamic product ads. So from here, we're gonna go back to the hamburger menu and then we're going to click on Ads Manager. You may need to go to All Tools and go to Ads Manager here. And then from here we're going to click Create Ad on the top right. And then from here go ahead and click Product Catalog Sales. And then just make sure you have that catalog that you just created. So I'm going to leave it Test Catalog. And name it whatever you're going to do. I normally just name it something like Dynamic product ads and then like I said I'm showing all products um, I would just say dash 
all products. If you were gonna do over 50, you could say dash over $50 or something like that. So once you name the campaign, go ahead and click continue. And then here's where we're gonna, where we're gonna choose um, basically who we're gonna target with the ads. So since we're creating dynamic product ads, we're looking to retarget people that already looked at a, at a specific product or added it to the cart. Um, so I leave this checked here, view or viewed or added to cart but not purchased. So those are people that either saw the product or saw it and added it to their cart but did not buy it. You can also just do people who just added to cart but did not buy, but that's going to that's going to bring down the number of people you can retarget. So if you have a ton of people coming to your store, you may want to choose this. But normally I just leave it to viewed or add to cart, the very first option here. There are a couple other options uh, or a few other options, but I wouldn't worry about those right now. Just go ahead and leave it here. Leave it to set to 14 days. This is how far back it's going to retarget someone. So it'll retarget someone that looked at your product up to 14 days ago. Once it goes to 15 days or more, that they looked at your product, then they'll stop being retargeted with these ads. So just leave it here, set to 14, and then scroll down, leave placements set to automatic. For budget, basically as much as you as you can handle. If you can leave it to 100, that's fine. I would say at least 20, um, bare minimum $5. So I'm gonna just set this to five, but like I said, I would, I would try to do at least 20, but this is, more than likely is going to be a pretty pretty well performing campaign for you so just start out with 20 or or 100 a day and and see how it works and, and just kind of tweak it from there but like i said bare minimum five dollars probably at least 20 if you can go ahead and click continue and then here is where you're going to create the actual ad so i like to leave it in the carousel format because it gives it gives you a chance to showcase different products in the same ad um, and this is kind of showing some of the same products, but it's going to um, obviously vary depending on what you're selling in your store and what your products are. If you change it to single image, it's just going to show an, an image for, for a single product. I think it looks way better and it seems to f perform better with the carousel ads. So all this stuff you can basically leave blank. Text is going to be the text that shows up above here. So what you want to think about is people were at one point looking at your product or added the product to their cart and then they left and you're trying to remind them of it. So one piece of text that we like to use a lot is did life get in the way? Because you never know, maybe they added in the way, maybe they added it to um, their shopping cart and their kid fell off a trampoline or something and and then they forgot about the bracelet they were looking at. You know what I mean? So this tends to work well. If you don't know what to write here, just type this in and you can, you can test different things out later. The headline is this area right here. And this is gonna, if you leave the product.name tag that they have here, that will pull in whatever your product name is in your store. You can also add other tags like name, brand, description, short description, price, things like that. Uh, here's the price tag and the newsfeed link description, which is pulling in the price here. You can add other text if you wanna. If you wanna add it, you can say on sale, and now that's gonna change to on sale in front of the price here. But generally, we just leave that just like it is, and it seems to work pretty well. The call to action is the button that shows up here. You can choose from a lot of different ones. Just go ahead and click shop now because. That's what you want people to do, right? You want them to go back to your store and shop now. And uh, that's basically it. Once you're happy with the way your ads look, uh, go ahead and scroll down and you can click place order and that's gonna place your order for the ads. So I hope you got a lot of value. Go ahead and click continue here. Hope you got a lot of value out of this video. If you wanna learn more about what you can do with Facebook ads for your e-commerce store. We actually have a, a webinar coming up. If you're on YouTube, you can click a link or a card that'll pop up in the top right here, and that'll bring you to a page where you can register for the webinar. So like I said, my name is Chuck Sharpstein from Enlightened Marketing. Hope you got a lot of value out of this video. Post any questions or comments below. Take care.